Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Taylor Combalusier, a mining analyst here at Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar features Eris Resources Limited. Eris Resources is a mid-tier base and precious metals producer that has a portfolio that includes four operating assets and one development project, all located in Australia. Notably, its portfolio went through material expansion through its acquisition of Round Oak Minerals this past July. The company has successfully extended the life of mine at its Cornerstone Triton Copper operations to eight years, and its other operating assets include the Krakow Gold Operations, Jaguar Zinc Copper Operations, and North Queensland Copper Operations. Eris also owns the Stockman Copper Zinc Project, which is an advanced development stage project 300 kilometers northeast of Melbourne. And that has a 10-year life of mine and all primary approvals. A definitive feasibility study is expected in fiscal year 2023. Today, I have with me on the webinar, Andrew, An Andre Labouchain, who's the executive chairman at Eris Resources. The format of today's webinar will be comprised of two parts. In the first part, Andre will provide an introduction to Eris Resources, and then in the second, we'll take your questions live. So please ask <coughs> questions using the chat and we'll get to as many as we can. To start, we'll handle the disclosures and then get into the presentation. For Eris Resources, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Eris Resources corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we know that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for Eris Resources specific disclosures. So with that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Andre to update you on Eris Resources and what you have to look forward to with this company. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it for the intro. Um, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Um, I guess just a bit of background on Eris Resources. Um, this month will be exactly, exactly 10 months since the new management team became involved with this company. At the time, we had the Triton Copper Mine and a gold mine in Indonesia, and the business had 140 million US dollars in debt. Um, both the mines were losing money, and there was a change in management team to, uh, to see how we can recover or improve the business. Over the last 10 years, we took that debt level down from 140 million US to zero. We, um, the gold mine we had in Indonesia, we have basically given back to creditors. And over this 10 year period, um, we have grown this company from one operating mine, the Triton Copper Mine, to four operating mines and um, a development project we're busy working on where the share price or the market cap has gone from $10 million only two years ago to today sitting around $400 million. Um, so that's been a very, very interesting journey for us. And I'll, I'll take you through the business where we are today and, and what's the plans going forward. Um, the uh, Just as a slave, as Tyler said, which um, you can read at your own, so currently, this is the Eris business. So we always had the Triton Copper Mine in New South Wales, Australia. Um, we then two years ago bought the Krakow Gold Mine from Evolution, uh, in where the company share price has gone from, or share market cap has gone from 10 million Australian dollars to um, over over 300 million dollars. That then allowed us to keep growing the business. And in July this year, we did a transaction where we bought a company called Round Oak. And that had in the North Queensland copper mine, which is called Mount Colin, the Jaguar copper zinc mine in Western Australia, and then the Stockman copper zinc project in um, South Australia. In, 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 um, so as we said, we got four operating mines. We got the one long life project, Stockman, which we're building. And I'll, I'll go into these assets in a bit more detail. We significantly increase our resource or reserve base with the acquisition of these assets and with some discovery at our own operations. This year, we're forecasting a production of around 60,000 copper equivalent tons um, and a very strong exposure to copper. And we have always said we want to grow this business in the, in the base metal spaces, specifically focus on copper. And then each one of these projects has got a significant exploration upside. Um, so a lot of internal 
organic growth opportunities, and then, of course, the Stockman project. As a business, we always said we want to grow this business further. And every time we do a transaction, you upscale the quality of the projects. And we believe the acquisition of the Round Oak assets has exactly done what we were looking for as an upscaling of, of the projects. Just touching base fairly quickly, our market cap as of the 5th of December was $411 million. And we have seen some, some good movement in the share price over the last month. Um, cash in the business at the end of the last quarter was $52 million. And, and part of the, that did not include a $28 million payment on a working capital closeout of the acquisition. So it would have been over $80 million at the end of the quarter. We have got a major shareholder, which is Washington Salt Patterson's, which is the company we bought these this, the round of business from. Um, they are a local uh, private equity fund um, and business out of Australia, and, and they are a 30% shareholder. So the payment of the, the round of assets, which was $234 million, was a combination of cash and, and equity. You can see there, uh, the different broker, the brokers who are, who look, who's looking after the, the stock. Um, and we have, we will see some more coming online shortly. With the board, um, we have made significant changes in the board over the last two years. Um, historically, we had bankers and bank, um, obviously with the bank debt we had in place, there was some, some, some representatives of the, of the banks on the board since we got the debt restructured and the um, the business to a point where we want to grow the business, we've made significant changes. So Colin Moret has joined us about two years ago, very well respected geologist and executive board board member in Australia. Sylvia Wiggins joined us about 18 months ago, um, specifically in the, the her background is investor banking and, and, and help us a lot in terms of how do we grow this business. And you can see there a lot of lot of experience. And then Robert Milner joined us on the 1st of July. He's a chairman of Washington H. Sol Patterson. Um, and he has joined the board as part of the representative of the major shareholder. The senior executive team, Rob and Ian and I have been working together over 14 years. We used to run a company called Norton Goldfields, uh, who was taken out by, by uh, Zijin. And then we were asked to join the company to take over the management of, of, of um, Eris. And Kim Franks has joined us a few years ago. As we grow in size, when we had Triton, we had about two, 350 employees. Now we've got 1,000 employees, and Kim has come on specifically on the people side of the, of the business. I guess just touching, touching the highlights for the last quarter, but I'll touch a little bit on, on some others. So the group, the group equivalent production was 14,000 tons. Um, and that is in line with our guidance, which is out there. The, big, the biggest focus for all miners, I think, in this environment, we all, we're all in is costs and ensuring you achieve your operating results. Um, the cost is very well controlled in the business. We've got, a, we've got teams at all the mines, uh, which has got a real focus on costs. Um, the Roundhook assets, which, which were brought into the business on the 1st of July, the Jaguar and the Mount Collin mine. Those integrations are all done. The teams are all part of the Ares team and has delivered significantly good results, specifically at the Jaguar mine. Um, we are in a in an investment phase in the business, specifically as you see, we go through these assets. Triton, uh, specifically, we put in a lot of capital in to start up new mines to extend that mine life. Um, so we invested quite a bit into new explorations, but new projects, but also on exploration. As I said earlier, each one of these mines uh, has got significant exploration. We've seen some good success at both the, the Krakow Gold Mine at Jaguar and Triton uh, in terms of on continuing increasing the resource base. As I said earlier, we've closed with nearly $52 million in the bank. And after the quarter, we received the working capital payment as part of the acquisition of, of, of $20 million. We got zero debt um, and, and we have now putting it, be busy putting in a team specifically with a focus on delivering on the um, Stockman project, which is our development project um, in, in Victoria. On the sustainability front, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but 
we have done a lot of work over the last two years on the sustainability front. What people don't always understand by operating specifically, and I think it would be exactly the same in, in, in your part of the world, um, you've already operated under significantly high quality and restrictive rules in terms of sustainability. But we have decided to focus on four specific areas in the business. Water and containment has always been a big challenge. Our Triton copper mine in New South Wales nearly ran out of water in, uh, in 2019. Um, we had to put an emergency pipeline in place to make sure we continue with water. And, and you know, as the, as the world goes, a couple of months later, after we spent a few million dollars on a pipeline, it started to rain, and the dam, which we can't be drawing water from, is 120% full. But we understand through that experience that water, water management is critical to the business, uh, specifically in, in Australia. Carbon and climate change, or specifically when we look at new projects, coming online, a lot more focus will be on what is the renewable options, uh, looking at, we're doing some work currently at Triton, for example, on electric loaders. Um, we involved with a project to deliver electric loaders into the industry. And then on diversity and inclusion and biodiversity and land is always critical. Um, our, we are busy updating all our closure plans uh, at each one of the mines. Um, and we understand that the biodiversity offsets, for example, at this new project we need to start is quite significant. And we are busy working through all the biodiversity offsets and land management plans for the new project. So how does it look? Um, you know, 10 years ago, I would have told the market when I joined this business, Triton has got four years life. Today, we're saying it's got eight years life. Um, that is through the ongoing discovery and continuation of our current deposits, but also we've had a significant discovery on exploration. We found that we call it the constellation deposit, and that has grown already to a 7 million ton ore body, um, and that becomes part, part of this plan. And we see that Triton will go beyond the eight-year mine life. At Krakow, we bought it two years ago from Evolution Mining. Um, at that stage, we knew it had two years life, but we said to the market, we think there's more. Two years, exactly two years later, we're now saying we, we, there's four years life. And it's just one of those assets. As long as you keep on exploring, um, you'll find extension to the mine life. The Jago mine, uh, 18 months ago, when it was owned by Washington Salt Pats, it had about two years life. They discovered the turbo deposit. We have drilled it out more. And now we think Jaguar has got more than four years life. The Mount Collin mine, though, it's a, got a firm two-year life. It's a small little copper mine um, in, in North Queensland in the Mount Isa region, which is uh, one of the best copper regions in Australia. Um, but it's in this cash harvesting phase, and it generates significant cash over the next two years. And we'll talk about the plans of what we got in the, the Mount Collin region. And then, of course, Stockman which is a development project. It's currently got a 10-year reserve life. It will produce between 30 and 35,000 tons of copper. And um, we're planning to have that in production by FY25. And we will talk a bit more in detail. So I guess the point is, two years ago, we only had the Triton mine and it only had four years life. Two years later, we're saying Triton has got eight years life. We got all these new mines coming in and you can see there, we're currently for this year forecasting around 60 to 65,000 tons of copper equivalent production. And as Stockman comes online and you see extensions of the other mines, you can see a significant increase in tons, production tons as we move forward in this business. The, um, then going into a bit more detail. So that's a photo of our Triton plant, the process plant. Um, it has been operating for a while, but Triton has grown over the years here. So we, as you can see there in the picture in the middle, you've got the Triton and Bajiriga deposit. We've been mining the Triton underground mine, the deep, the deep one on, on the middle, um, for since since we joined the mine, and it kept on extending a depth, although the grade has dropped off. And as the grade dropped off, we started to change the strategy of the business, where we we currently used to mine the Triton mine and the Morawombi underground mine on the bottom right of that slide. We have decided to actually only go for the higher grade 
areas down the bottom of Triton. And at the same time, we invested in the development of the budget guy deposit, as you can see on that photo, the green and blue. We have put the development in place. We started mining. And what you, the whole idea with this was how do we replace 1.1% copper down the bottom of Triton with better quality tons and grade coming in from other areas. So the budget guy deposit, which is now in production, is mining at about 1.8% copper instead of 1.1 down one, one kilometer deep. We've started the development of the Voca tank deposit, which you can see there. We will hit that ore body by in the next two or three weeks. And then we'll start to develop, and where that will be in production by, by the the last the second quarter of calendar 2023, and that grade sitting at two and a half percent copper with very good gold grades, and we get get our gold our gold credit. So as you can see with this plan is, as these the grade is going down at Triton at depth, we're bringing in 1.8 percent copper from Bajigar, 2.5 percent copper out of a Boca tank. And then the Marawombi underground mine, which we started about five years ago, which only had two or three years life, keeps on extending. We drilled a hole 215 meters below the current workings, very good intersections, which has shown us once again that the Marawombi underground mine keep on going. Now, with this plan in place, we can see the Triton production going currently from about 20 to 22,000 tons of copper annually to over 30,000 tons of copper in the next next few years. And what will assist us to get to that is really this deposit. So the Constellation deposit, which we discovered in 20, November 20, 2020, um, has now been drilled to a 6.7 million tons at 1.85% copper and good gold grades. Um, and as you can see on that slide, all everything in red is still open um, those those gray blocks down the bottom are all EM plates, which is identifying that the ore body keeps going deeper. But they get, you get to a point where you've got enough to start to put a mine plan around it. So this basically starts on surface. The current idea is we're doing various options, but the option is to do an open, small open cut mine. Um, and then once you've done that, you go underground or you do it all at the same time. Now, this is is a very good deposit. So as you can bring these, again, higher grades into production, you'll see that uplift in the production profile. This has been, been put in place. A, bit, a feasibility study is underway, and we're aiming to have this the feasibility study and the study in a position where we can bring this mine into production within the next two years. Just a little bit so that you can see where everything sits. So on that map on the right hand side, you can see in the middle, well, bottom, sort of bottom half, you see the Triton mine and the budget gar mine. And at that same place is the process plant. We're currently hauling from Marawombi and on a on a road about 27 kilometers from Marawombi to Triton. We will bring in a Voca tank basically on the same basis. And then all of that in that block is our exploration tenement. Now, everything to the north of that Mitchell Highway um, hasn't really been explored a lot. We've done an EM survey. We've identified the constellation uh, anomaly. We drilled it and we, we got, got the deposit. We are now doing EM survey to the northern part of that. And um, we should have some results in the next month or month or so on those, those results. And then you hopefully follow the same model to discover further deposits to the north of, of, of the business. But that has been a very successful business for us, where it's gone from producing 16, 17, well, eight, uh, sorry, 18,000 tons of copper probably 10 years ago to where we are today, looking at a horizon where we can achieve 30 plus thousand tons of copper in the next two years. Significant growth opportunity and a way forward. The cracker operation, that's a photo of, of the plant, a very good infrastructure. A uh, very nice part of the world, by the way, as well. Um, the This is a, we're mining the current Western field vein, which is basically mining old areas and extensions to the old, uh, those old areas. Um, we Basically, the model for Triton currently is we're reinvesting the cash we make into exploration and capital. Um, and the whole idea is to find those extensions on there from exploration. Now, that said, 
we have discovered or not discovered, we've gone into an old mining area, which we call Golden Platter, which is only a kilometer away from the mill. Um, originally, we thought that purpley structure is the only thing we're chasing. We expected, uh, you know, high volume, low grade. But since we got in, when I defined these different structures and wherever those structures intersecting, there's some really high grade zones in within those structures. As you can see, the grades up there, you know, 10, 16 gram a ton, 7, 4, 9 gram a ton, and some of those intersections. So the idea now is to draw this out into a resource, put a mine plan around it, and then bring that into the production profile for Krakow um, within the infrastructure available. And that's how we will extend the life of Krakow through this. But what we're also doing um, is, uh, sorry, what? is a big focus on new exploration. So below that gray block, that Ballymore extended and, and Krakow Southwest to the south of the current tenement package, basically no exploration has been done historically. So we are doing some, some, some ground-based work um, and then we'll start to do some drilling. We, we're quite confident that that is where potentially there's a new discovery sitting as an opportunity for Krakow. Going on to Jaguar, interesting, very different different part of the world. Um, this is the Jaguar mine. It's an underground mine. Um, it has been, it's mining the, the Bentley deposit. As you can see, we've got a very large tenement package. They discovered the new turbo lens in 2021. Um, since we have this, uh, since July, this asset is doing really, really well with their production and integration. And, and we're now looking at how do we extend this business going forward. One of the biggest opportunities are the discovery of the turbo turbo deposit. So since we we got it got the deposit into our fold, that has grown nearly double in, in size, um, in strike length, and also seeing some really good zinc grades and copper grades in those in those drilling. What we're doing this year, we're setting it up. So we're improving the ventilation, we're improving the pumping. We will put a high-speed development in to get down to turbo, and that will then extend this mine to beyond four years and going forward. As you can see there, that we call it Java Deeps. There's one hole which intersected a significant grade, and we will go past that, that deposit as we put the decline down to get to turbo. Um, so what we've seen, what we bought, we have already seen a, a significant improvement from what we expected at the time. The North Queensland asset is a very interesting little model, which, which the guys have started before, before we joined. It doesn't have a process plan. It is a small underground mine, uh, which we basically has got an office set up and a camp set up. We uh, mine it underground, put truck it to the Mount Isa smelter. They treat it and we get paid for the copper. Now, in this region in Queensland, these are, there's a significant amount of these sort of opportunities where the deposit is not big enough for it, its own setup in plant. The explorers in the region are looking for big deposits which they can then sell on or, or put a plant around. So there's a lot of these sort of size deposits which fits this model. So what you do is you're using a contractor you pick up your plant, you pick, or you pick up your, your office and your camp, move it to the next one with a contract, and you do it again. Very small footprint. The environmental closure plans are very easy to do, and you can put a pipeline of projects in place to, um, to look at this, this deposit. As you can see there, in that region, um, there's so many different opportunities. We've got a lot of exploration ground, but also, for example, on the road to, to this Mount Colin underground mine, there's a deposit owned by another explorer, which we already talked to, talking to them about opportunities to do the same. But in one of the assets we already own is the Barbara deposit. Um, as you can see on that map, on that map, the Barbara deposit will also be hauled to, to Mount Isa. And um, what we're doing, we're currently drilling it out. So it used to be mined as an open pit. We're now looking at it as an underground mine similar to Mount Colin. We're busy drilling it out to, to define the resource, and then that would be the potential extension where you go from Mount Colin to Barbara as your next option in the next next two years or so. So we think that model is a unique model for the region. 
and our business development team and Stefan and the team are busy working on a pipeline of projects to, to get that in place. Just briefly on touching on the Stockman project. So Stockman is already, uh, it was an historical mine. So there's already a tailings dam in place and that's the photo you see in front. Um, the project has got already mining lease approval. They got infrastructure lease approval for the tailings dam. There's mo all the major approvals is in place. It's got a 10 year reserve life of, of more than 4% copper, equi copper equivalent in ground but the current looking at about 3% copper equivalent recovered. Those are really good grades for this sort of project. So the idea here is to put a 1 million ton per annum process plant in place, mining from, from, from two underground mines, the Wilga and the Karawal mine, about a million tons. As you can see there, it's basically on the side of a hill, easy access to get in. It's not a lot of, lot of costs. Current design is a simple flotation circuit. We've picked up their feasibility study. We're busy finishing off the study, but then we're going to look at 21st century technologies and see how we can make this footprint smaller, but also get better recoveries and, um, and, and, and sort of processing capacity through the design. The aim for us is to have this study done and investment decision by the end of our financial year, FY23, which is by June next year. But you can see the, the production profile. So once you get it up and going and you, you get your million tons, you'll do 30 to 35,000 tons of copper equivalent for a very long period of time. That's already in reserve. There's a lot of upside from further extensions from both resources. And then there's some other exploration upsides, which we're looking at. I guess that sort of summarizes it. I'm not going to go into too much detail. As you can see on this slide, we do put detailed guidance out for each operation in each metal. Um, and the big focus for us currently is achieving on those, but also cost and capital management is critical. Um, we, we are very focused in investing in these operations to extend the mine life going forward. And um, as you can see in the, the corporate slide, you know, we are putting 50 to $60 million in capital in these projects. And um, and keep it, keep growing them and the production profile of around sixty four thousand copper equivalent tons. I guess Taylor, that's sort of the the presentation. I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Andre, for the great presentation. Um, so now we'll turn uh, to the Q and A portion of the webinar. And just a reminder to everybody on the line uh, that you can type your questions in at any point uh, to the chat box. Um, so maybe to uh, to kick it off, um, you know, you mentioned a little bit about looking, um, you know, at, looking at growth going forward, looking to stay on the, the base metal side. Um, you know, I guess what's the criteria driving into that a little bit more for, you know, potential acquisitions or, you know, whatever you're, you're looking at? Is that production stage and focus on copper or? Um, yeah, thanks. So look, for us, it is about, as you can see over the last two years, you know, we've grown with specific focus on, on operating assets um, or something like Stockman, which is something you can bring into production in a short space of time. Um, so we are looking currently around Australia first because it just makes sense. Once you go offshore, it's a big strategic decision to, to do that. Um, copper is our preference. Um, we do see the copper, copper as, a, as a majority metal in the business. And, you know, we all, I don't, sure, I don't need to tell anyone on this webinar that about copper and the future of copper, we all believe it's going to go up, but, you know, <laughs> no one really knows. Um, but we do think copper is a metal to be in and, and, and there will be a lot of focus trying to get copper, copper type assets. But that said, you know, we are running a business. We already a multi-commodity business. It's about finding the right opportunity. Right. Perfect. Okay. Um, we have a question uh, that came in. Obviously, this is a, a pretty new story for North American uh, investors, um, you know, listed on the ASX. Are you going to be uh, looking at uh, getting a Canadian listing? Look, not at this stage. Um, maybe in the future, but at this stage, we're just staying focused on the ASX. Okay. Um, so maybe we'll we'll turn right now to you know one of the the hot button uh, issues right now in the industry is just the general inflation environment. 
Um, I guess what are you seeing in Australia right now? Obviously, you're you're benefiting a little bit from the the uh, you know high gold price and, and U.S. dollars relative uh, to where the Australian dollar is. Uh, but maybe yeah. what, so what are you seeing on the ground right now? Look, what we see on the ground, obviously, you're right. We're benefiting, especially on all our revenue streams on the the Aussie dollar, where that's set against the U.S. Um, on the ground, we've seen in the last 18 months um, the labor cost and labor movement in Australia, and I'm sure you guys might sit with the same, where we see a lot of turnover because people move around for better better salaries and, and those sort of things. We are seeing that tapering, tapering down a bit, so we're seeing the workforce starting to settle down. Um, we have seen specifically last year significant increases where you had to try to stay competitive in the market, but, you know, well, I do believe that money is not the only motivator. So you know, it's a, what you said, how you set up your business culturally, and and those will attract people as well. So we're starting to see that that settling down. Um, on the cost side, we've seen significant increases over the last twelve months. Um, but I must say, at a at a mine operating cost level, although we do see those, um, the guys are managing their costs all within their budgets pretty well. So that is a that's a challenge we will face i think in the next 12 months um and but i do think there's there's a good opportunity for us as well we just launched a 25 million dollar cost saving exercise across the group which is sort of because you know the group now has got 500 million dollars of controllable costs and to save 25 million dollars is not such a if you think about it this way um, and the teams are all coming up with, with different ways of trying to save additional money. But yeah, no, look, the inflation environment is here to stay for a while. But you know, talking to someone the other day, these interest rates we are seeing now and inflation, all right, not inflation, inflation is a bit higher, but we used to live with interest rates above 3, 3 or 4 or 5% historically forever. So you know, I think we just got used to the zeros and the ones, that's all. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, okay, maybe um, j just looking kind of, you, you know, you had the nice timeline uh, figure up that showed the different assets with their life of mines. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you're investing in exploration right now. Um, maybe what what is the, I guess, kind of high level breakdown of that spending um, on different assets? And where where's the focus um, for kind of extending life of mine? Um, and, and where is yeah. that being allocated? So we would spend a, on the group about 25 plus million dollars on exploration this financial year. The key areas we focus on is that Triton is drilling out constellation is obviously making sure that we understand where we're going. The as, uh, assets for Marwambi and Triton all just extends further. So that's just more in-ground drilling to extend that. The big potential upside and spend we have for Triton is that northern part of the tenement package where we've done the airborne EM and to start to do some work and drilling there. If you find another constellation, you know, that's another uh, material find and, and a game changer for Triton. Um, so for Triton, that's where we focus. At Krakow, the biggest upside, Greenfield's upside is that southern part of the tenement package. and and. Um, the guys are very, very keen to start to do a few holes in there because, as I said, it hasn't been explored. And, and talking to the geos within the business, that is one of the, the best areas to find the next big discovery is at, is at um, specifically at, at Krakow. And then obviously at, at JAG, um, it's keep on drilling at those extensions because that's great mine life, but also then starting to step out of the, the Bentley deposit and start to look at that tenement package we have to see what else is, is around. And there's some very high priority targets which we'll start to to focus on in the next next six months or so. Perfect, okay. Um, just looking through here. Um, not seeing any other questions that have come in at this point. Um, I'll, I'll just put out a, a final call to, to viewers uh, to submit any questions, but uh, maybe right now, um, you know, if you could just kind of outline the, the key catalysts that are coming up uh, for Eris uh, and what the key things are that investors should take away uh, with them from this presentation. Yeah, look, I think the key catalyst right now is is the updates on um, 
for say, if you think about the business as a group, um, obviously achieving the gardens and the market is looking at since the acquisition for some confidence that you know these assets are locked in and they are delivering on plan and on on guidance. Um, so the next two quarters on that will be will in my view be quite quite important. Um, on the exploration side, is giving comfort that those mine lives which we got out there is achievable, and and I got no doubt they are. But as we draw turbo further out, you know, bring those resources in. The uh, golden platter deposit, we're planning to bring a resource update on that in the next month um, so people can see the size of, of what that can be and what that can do to the business. And then, obviously, the exploration up north at Triton, if you find a few more high-priority targets, that will be very interesting. Perfect. Okay. Um, so yeah, we haven't had any other uh, questions come in, so I think we'll we'll leave it there uh, for today. Uh, so with that, I would like to thank you very much, Andre, for uh, presenting Eris Resources to us this this afternoon uh, and hosting a webinar with Red Cloud Securities. And thank you to everybody uh, on the line for tuning in. Thank you, Tyler, and everyone. Appreciate your time.